Hey, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. We are on location today for a very special show that focuses on making healthy cooking decisions. You know, the holiday season is rapidly approaching, and we want to make sure that we're consistent with one of Huntsville's best initiatives called Healthy Huntsville. It's all about making the right choices for your life and making sure that when the holiday season is over, you haven't eaten more than you should have. I'm going to be talking today with one of my favorite nutritionists. She's none other than Donna Green Goodman, and we're going to be cooking up good health. Kenny, I'm so glad to be here. Let's get this party started. Hey, welcome back to the segment. We are excited to be here today on location at Lifestyle Therapeutics with my good friend, Donna Green Goodman. Donna, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, Kenny. I can't believe we're ready for the holidays again. You know, just this time last year, we yeah. were together talking about cooking up good health for the holiday. Yeah. Had a great spread of there. Yeah. And this year we are actually on location and getting a great opportunity to see what you do behind the scenes so often. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're here. I decided this year that I wanted to make sure that our viewers got to see you actually cook something. Oh. Because a lot of times when you're going into holidays or even special occasions and people want to make healthier choices, they think that it's hard to do. And the last time that I visited you, everything was prepared. But today we're actually going to demonstrate some things and um, see how good your cooking skills are. Well, that should be a lot of fun because I do have skills. That's what I heard. All right. But we're going to see. Right. We're going to see. <laughs> what we're doing today, um, I want to tell you what I brought and then we're going to let you make one of these things. I made a sweet potato pie. Mm. Now that is one of my favorites. Okay. My absolute favorite in the world is probably for a sweet potato pie and then blueberry cobbler. Okay, well I do both of those. Okay. Um, and the, the healthy piece of this is that the crust has, is whole grain and that the filling, of course, doesn't have any dairy or milk or anything like that in there. Now that's really interesting right there to me because mm -hmm. a lot of people when they go into the store they order that pie they're thinking about the taste of it mm -hmm. and they're thinking about if it's something other than maybe a sweet taste to it mm -hmm. that just blows them away it's not very good but I've had your cooking before mm -hmm. and you cook with lots of raw products and natural products and it tastes just as good as anything that somebody might buy in the store. I think what I did especially for for some of these dishes was to look back in my family for southern kinds of things mm. and see what the secrets to the flavor was and then develop a way for texture. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times when you're cooking a, a sweet potato pie, some people might put um, carnation milk or something in there and a bunch of eggs, which is going to hold it and set it. And I had to figure out what I could put in there to make it set and then figure out the sweetness. Because I have some friends who make it and it's very... Um, orangey yellow in color mm -hmm. and then my family's was always a darker color so then more spices that you would put in mm -hmm. to give it the color and then once you get the taste as a matter of fact when I was making this today before I brought to you my son who used to be my helper came in the kitchen he's <laughs> like okay how many are you making does any get to stay here but he was the one who would tell me that mom this is is pretty good now mm. so I did the potato pie um, I mentioned the, the, the cranberry relish, mm. and I didn't do the relish because it's just so easy to make. You just buy, I would say, about two pounds of fresh cranberries, and then I would use a can of frozen um, juice and put that in the stove, on the stove, with it, bring it to a boil, and then you just listen to the cranberries pop. Mm. And when they stop popping, you've got homemade cranberry sauce. Wow. It will be tart. But you can add honey or agave or some other kind of sweetener if you want kind to. Kind smooth out that taste. And for a person who doesn't want to do any sugar, they mm. don't have to do it at all. Mm. Then I made some eggnog ice cream to go with the potato pie. Now that looks t like it's to die for. Well, it's really good. You don't have to die for this because it's healthy. <laughs> Which camera? It's the, healthy. And that's the whole goal. That's the whole goal. That's right. Then I did some carob chip cookies instead of chocolate chip cookies. Wow. There are some benefits to chocolate that people are talking about. But the drawback for me was it still had caffeine in it. Mm. And as a breast cancer survivor, those of us who are women know that caffeine can change the breast tissue, increase your risk for breast cancer, so I use carob instead. Mm. This is an almond cake, and um, if you are at home and are planning to make something for the holiday and you've run out of confectioner sugar, mm -hmm. you can take a cup of regular sugar, put it in the blender with a tablespoon of cornstarch, blend it till it's fine, and you have confectioner sugar mm. that you can put on top of whatever you want to do. Then inside of here, we're going to talk about this a little later, because this, <laughs> this is something on the day after Thanksgiving, we always do the sale. 
And my mother would fix a plate of whatever we had for dinner to take in the car with it because we left before day. Mm -hmm. So this is a soup that I made with turnip greens and black eyed peas and sweet potatoes and coconut. I curried it. Wow. So it's kind of like the leftovers from Thanksgiving that you might have in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times people will laugh about the turkey that you eat forever right. after Thanksgiving. But this is another way to incorporate the other foods that you've eaten. Mm. And so I did that. And then these are homemade yeast wings. Oh, those look really, Don't really they good. Look so good. Yeah, they I'm look just great. so excited. And I think when you taste this <laughs> in the soup, it'll be really good. But wow. what we're going to teach you how to do now is make a pie crust. Are we going to do this in the first segment? Because, you know, we've got a couple of segments we're to go. We're doing this right here. All right, right great. Now. Get your apron and put it on. All right. Because he said before we went on air that he likes to cook. And well, one of the things I did want to ask, though, Donna, while I'm putting my apron on and getting ready for this uh -huh. um, amazing journey that you're about to take me on, as you mentioned being a breast cancer survivor, yes. and I think you have one of the most phenomenal stories uh, and most inspirational stories that ties directly into what we're talking about with okay. regards to eating healthy. Okay. Just give us the Cliff Notes version of your story. Cliff Notes, 20 years ago, um, I had infiltrating metastatic breast cancer. was told I had two to five years to live if I didn't do all the treatment. I'm trained as a public health educator, so my first brain went to, okay, there's got to be some lifestyle things that I can do. And as I began to look at the lifestyle choices that I could make to improve um, the, the actual case of the breast cancer, my prognosis for the breast cancer, and other health conditions that I was experiencing, the choices that I was making also attribute to a person who has diabetes, a person who has heart disease, a person who's trying to lose weight, eating more whole foods, eating less processed foods, exercising more. That's what I started doing. And I got the same results in six months and then at nine months that you would have expected if I had done all of the treatment. And so mm -hmm. for a person who doesn't have breast cancer or any type of cancer, but I mean, you're one who I watch your Fitbit stats all the mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. Just if you start walking mm. more, if you're diabetic, your body senses that as if you've had insulin. Mm. And that actually helps to bring your blood sugars back down the way they're mm. supposed to. So it, it revolutionized my life. And you know, the blood sugar thing is a big challenge for people at holiday season because you go to all these office parties right. and church socials right. and lots of different gatherings. Right. And there's really sweet stuff everywhere. Right. Right. It's kind of hard to say no for some people. It is hard to say no. I often recommend that people eat something before they go, and they ask to take their plate with them. Mm. And then you don't have to worry so much about overeating. Then you can get it home, decide what you're going to eat, um, keep a glass in your hand of water, something with lemon in it. Lemon actually helps to cut your appetite. So those are some, a couple of simple things that you could do because it's really hard. And, yeah. and a holiday <laughs> starts with Halloween and it goes all the way to New Year's. That's right, it's and a so big span. Eight weeks, man, at yeah. the end of eight weeks, you could be like yeah. another person. You really could be. And you know, if you get that plate that you take with you, you don't want to take an extra plate. No. You want to manage those portion Absolutely. sizes. Absolutely, absolutely. Or just, you know, I've already eaten something, so I'm just mm. going to take this home, mm -hmm. if, if that's okay with you. Yeah, and don't and, go home and eat it either. Right, right. And then another thing, if you're the host of the party, plan more healthy alternatives. And if you're coming to the party and you know the people that you're coming to and you have anything that you can um, suggest to them, suggest that they have more healthy things. One of my favorite holiday dishes is this salad, this black beans and and black eyed peas and corn and onions and bell peppers, I could just stand next to the table and eat that. And if you're diabetic, you wouldn't have to worry because it's high in fiber and the fiber is going to keep your blood sugars from peaking. Okay, I'm putting my request in already. Oh, for here we go. That's the one I want right there. I was waiting for you to it's just drop so that information good. on me. It's so good. It sounds wonderful. It's so good. I'll, I'll do that for you, Kenny. All right, so what do we got here? Okay, what we're going to do now is make the same pie crust. Okay. And what I have here, I already made filling for you, so we could just mm. put that in there. My son said, bring that one back home. <laughs> yes, sir, I will. We'll take care of them. Yes. <laughs> what we need to do is measure a half a cup of each flour, I'm using some all-purpose flour. Just fill that up. All right. And I'm using some white whole wheat flour. White whole wheat flour um, is made from a Stump softer. It dump it right there. Right. It's made from a softer wheat, and then you need a half a cup oh, of this. Cup of and what I tend to do when I'm teaching people how to eat healthier, if they're used to eating all white flours, we need to eat more whole grain flours. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you go to a whole grain, it's so dark and heavy that you you don't like it. So I often tell people to use a white whole wheat flour or to mix it with all-purpose flour, and mm -hmm. that, that makes the final product easier. So that's pretty much it. Stir that up right there. All right. And then, traditionally, you put about, um, I guess, six to eight tablespoons of some kind of fat in here now. Mm. But what we've done is to use a liquid oil and water. Usually, you will cut in the shortening, 
and then you will add water to it and it'll come into a ball. Okay. We put the salt in here. You've just added the flour. That All looks right. really good. I want you to take this whisk and whisk this together. All right. We know how people get together and you say water and oil don't mix, so you know that's going to be a mess. Just keep whisking it until it starts to look like melted Crisco. And what it's we're doing, there. you see that? We're emulsifying this so that when it goes inside of here, it'll stay together in order to make this a real flaky crust. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. People who have issues with whole wheat, whole grains, there are so many other grains besides wheat, if, if wheat is not one that you want to eat. Mm -hmm. um, and my girlfriend who works here with us, Glenda Jones, she has some amazing options for people who are gluten-free perhaps, mm -hmm. but want to eat something that's a little healthier. Mm. That looks good to me. We're going to dump it in there. Right. I gave him an easy one. Okay. <laughs> well, we can make it as difficult as we want. We okay. Have a, we have a yearly standing engagement okay. too, so we'll get Stir a, a more up. challenging one next year. Stir that up. All right. Put this down here. All right. Okay. And as you stir that up, now you want to form it into a ball. It should come together. Oh, am I doing that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> okay, now what we want to do is get your hands dirty. Okay. Put them in there, and we want to pull this together. So you take that fork out or dump that off the fork? Here you go. Okay, and what am I doing? You're pulling it into a ball. Into a, just one round ball? Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Keep pulling it like that. Now this is when you're really cooking. <laughs> and I know that there are a lot of people who have those bread machines and everything, mm. but when you put it in your hands like this, I'm going to add a little more water to mm. that. Okay. Okay. All right. And this should for form a ball right away. Mm -hmm. And yes, see how it came together a little mm -hmm. better with the more water in it? Mm -hmm. Let me see what it feels like. Let me see if I got that right. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Give me a little more water. All right. I don't know what happened. A lot of times, too, and I learned this over years of cooking, depending on the humidity in mm. the room or the house, you can actually end up with a different final product because mm. the room is wetter or drier mm -hmm. than um, you expect it to be, and so it doesn't hold together as well as it could because mm. this should definitely be enough. Okay. So we're going to let this be it. All right. All right, now, I'm going to move this over here, right. and we're going to put a little flour on here. Okay. My mother used to say when I was a child and she would make dough. You can use your fingers. Okay, just, just, put some just a, a mm -hmm. tad or? Yeah, just some here. You need more than that? Yeah, you need a little more than that. All right. Um, and her pie crust would come apart every time she made it. And she said that's because there's so much love in it. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> so we'll see how much love we have in this. Now All we right. want to get this. All right. And we want to roll it out. Mm -hmm. I used to do this with my son when he was a preschooler. Keep rolling, and we want to roll it into the shape of a pie. So you can, yeah, roll the other roll way. Roll it back this way, and keep doing right, it. And try to <laughs> get it. I'm, I'm working it. It's, yeah. It's, it kind of looks like a crust. It's going to be a baby pie, maybe, huh? I wonder what my son is going to say. Did Uncle Kenny He's make gonna, this? Yeah, he probably will. <laughs> okay. I think it's moving all over the place all right, on let's me. Let's put a little, this is another little trick you can do. Put some water underneath the wax paper, and that right. should help it stop sliding. Yeah, because okay. it is sliding quite a bit right now. Right. Let me see if I can. And ideally, we want to keep rolling it until it forms. Okay. This one is not shaping around. Yeah, I know. So let's see if we can make it a little different. Do we have enough uh, ingredient there? Oh, okay, we can modify it. Yeah. There we go. Piece and meal it together. <laughs> see if that happens. That's the only thing with live television. If it doesn't go exactly the way that you intend it. All there right. We go. And then we're going to keep going. All right. There we go. So I think this might be the point where we keep everybody in suspense and we tell them that we're going to wrap it up for today. Okay. But when we come back next week, okay. we're actually going to have a chance to finish this pie off. Okay and show people exactly how they can have one of those good-looking finished absolutely, products just like absolutely. that. Absolutely. We'll give you some tips going forward in the holidays so that every time you celebrate for the next eight weeks, it'll be because you're doing it from a healthy perspective. Fantastic. Sounds good. Donna Green Goodman, she's one of the best, and we're going to be back with her next week to finish this pie and maybe even sample a few things and tell you a little bit more about how to make the most of the holiday season. For Impact, I'm Kenny Anderson. We'll see you again soon.